Davo touched on something there which I thought was interesting and links to our next topic um, about young lads uh, coming up through the ranks and academies kind of dictating where their career is going. I'm not afraid now to say, you're not blaming me? Okay, I'm out of here, which is brave enough for a 16, 17-year-old to maybe make that move out to Germany or, or wherever they're going, you know. And um, football is evolving like that. And we're seeing less and less of the loyal type of one club players. We talked about Messi there, who was one. Uh, in the comments, you, you see the likes of Skulls getting mentioned and Gerard getting mentioned, Lampard. These are all guys who really um, stuck with their own clubs for one reason or another. So, Pete, this is your topic. I want to know what kind of brought this about. I think it's Kane mainly. Yeah, um, well, it's, and it's three it's like, yeah. So I did wonder... A couple of years ago, was Kane going to be a one club player as well? And kind of did respect that about him because he does claim to love sports. But now it looks like he's making an awful lot of noise and he's not that loyal player that we once thought he was. Well, first of all, let me correct you. Frank Lampard is just as much of a Judas as anyone. He left West Ham, which was his club. It was his father's club. But I don't want to talk about it. I'm not interested in Frank Lampard. I'm fair play to me. He had a great career. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, it surprises me, to be honest with you, how naive football supporters can be. And that's why I wanted to talk about. I took a lot of personal pleasure today to see. Uh, I mean, I have a lot of good friends at Tottenham Hotspur, as you know. I did a couple of coaching badges there. And I have a lot of friends on Twitter that are huge Tottenham supporters. And we've had to all put up with how they... They cast light and shade between Harry Kane and Mohamed Salah over the last three or four years. And I was delighted, delighted to see Harry Kane show everybody what he truly is. Now, that's not to say he's the biggest sinner in the world. He's a professional athlete and he wants the best. He turned 28 the other day and he wants the best for Harry Kane. However, Tottenham fans would have sworn blind to you that you know, Mohamed Salah is the devil and Harry Kane, Mr. England, you know, Mr. Sports, Mr. Loyalty. Let me tell you. Uh, and, I, you know, for me, the only surprise, as I've said, is the shock at sports supporters. I mean, if you look at his early years, uh, I mean, he had, and I'll tell you where this comes from and why I chose, chose. There's just three examples of players. Harry Kane is one. The early years of rejection. I mean, Kane was at Arsenal. It's no secret. I think he was there till about 10, 10 or 11 years of age. And Liam Brady described him as not very athletic and a little bit overweight. So he was he was showing his marching papers. I think that then he went back to his own club, his uh, his boyhood <laughs> club, whatever, it's somewhere in Hertfordshire, and ended up going to Wofford. Um, uh, and where he was, because of his build, they kind of looked at him and went, oh, okay, you'll do it for us as a defensive midfielder. And I think then... Uh, he did uh, well in a couple of games and won notably against Spores and Spores decided to give him, sign him on schoolboy forms. And then he had a growth sport at 15, 16 and the rest is history. The reason I picked on Harry, I suppose, I you know, there's no doubt, I mean, that we all have to do what we have to do in order to fulfil our professional ambitions. But it kind of stuck in my throat. For example, I would define loyalty like Gar would define loyalty, like Davo yourself, anyone that ever played this game, as not just loyalty to a club, but loyalty to your teammates. I mean, let's face it, this is a fella who swore on his daughter's life that he, he touched a ball that he never touched just to get a goal and mm. take it off Christian Eriksen. This is a fella... <laughs> This is a fella who watched a semi-final of a Champions League that Tottenham Hotspur had an incredible turnaround against Ajax of Amsterdam and uh, Lucas Moura played absolutely out of his skin. And the reason why, uh, why Ajax just couldn't handle sports that night because it was the pace of movement in the final tour of to uh, for Tottenham. Harry Kane insisted as captain... I believe there was obviously uh, conversations with uh, the then manager, insisted on starting the game against Liverpool and had 11 touches in the first half. Completely, That Champions League final was as comfortable a game for Liverpool Football Club as I've ever seen. And it was because Harry Kane was on the park. I worried after that semi-final that that sports that played against Ajax in the Amsterdam Arena was going to be the sports we would face in Madrid with Lucas Moura, Son, and all this movement that we would have had a few problems with, to be quite mm -hmm. honest with you. And it would have been not a toss of a coin, but it certainly would have been more disciplined. That's a lack of loyalty and a lack of selflessness, a lack of vision and a lack of 
caring about your club and your teammates, to be honest. So I cannot believe that Harry Kane but gets such an easy ride off the British media for, for those things alone. Anyway, cast that aside. He's just one example. So sports fans, I cannot. the only shock today is that you're surprised. Secondly, I wanted to talk about <laughs> Matt Letizia. Matt Letizia, who played for Southampton, I think, between 1986 and 2002. Only ever played for them at a serious level. Played a few times for England. Had a new, numerous opportunities to play for many clubs and was described in disparaging terms both by club, other club managers and his international manager. I think, to be honest with you, and I want to get onto my tour player, which is Jack, Jack Grealish. I think Jack Grealish, who gets a terrible rap from us Irish because he chose to, to throw the, the green jersey in the bin, do the Judas. I actually can envisage, and I might be wrong, Jack Grealish staying with Aston Villa and doing uh, a Matt Letizia and deciding, OK, they want to build a club, a team around me. He goes training today. He could easily have you sitting there, photographs, having a laugh with Dean Smith. If he leaves or he doesn't, he's obviously going to leave on good terms or he might stay. It just amazes me. If you, for example, there's a few points made today. If Paul Pogba, Raheem Sterling, I, I can rattle through the amount, Son, if any of them uh, had done today what Harry Kane had done, there would be a lynch mob all over the British media and social media looking for where these players are. Today, there was people actually making excuses. Maybe he's doing a COVID test. No, there was England players on England duty saying that they knew he wasn't, two, two three weeks ago, they knew he wasn't going to turn up for training. Today. This is the captain of Tottenham Hotspur Football Club and his bloody country. And basically, he's uh, Gary Lineker tweeted today that he hopes that Tottenham Hotspur and, and Harry Kane can find an amicable divorce so as everybody can walk away smelling the roses. If that was Paul Pogba or any other player that was non-English and non-white, to be honest with you, there would be all sorts of consternation today. But it's okay because it's okay, to be quite honest with you. And that's the way it is. <laughs> but I can, uh, on, right. the flip, on the flip side of it, I can, I can honestly see maybe Jack Grealish doing a U-turn and staying with Villa and enjoying himself, mm. letting the team be, maybe winning nothing, but letting the team being built around. I can see him, because this is a maverick. You know, he, he, mm. a lot of people describe this young player as almost like a Frank Worthington type figure. It wouldn't be go beyond me if he went on television and went, I've had a nice chat with um, with Pep Guardiola and they've offered me the, the sun, moon and stars, but I want to stay with Aston Villa. I want this to be my club. I can see him doing that. Right, we'll give someone else a go, Pete. That was <laughs> that was a, a a really good speech. <laughs> um, Gar, um, Darren Dunbar says players want medals. Can't blame Kane to be fair. Owen left Liverpool, and Jared wanted out twice. What do you think is the formula for keeping a player at one club for life, or is it just as straightforward as they're winning trophies and they're getting paid well or is there a bit more than that? How do you keep a player? We probably never see a, a Leticia. Like he was well good enough to move on to anyone in the English league at that time. Listen, I think times have changed, lads. Uh, you know, listen, we see Messi every year, year on year. You now wanting a new contract says he's, he's getting linked to every bloody club in the world that has a bit of money and then gets a new contract and, and so on and so forth. So, But listen, he's been there, done it. He's got loads of medals in the bank. So, you know, you know, he, he probably gets get gets away with it in fairness at uh, Barcelona. They haven't got a penny, I don't know where they got paying from. But anyway, um in Kane's instance, I think he's out outgrown spores, if I'm honest. Um I think spores are, you know, in a major, major, major transition now. Um, you know, a manager who's probably done hasn't done much in English in the English game, let's be honest here. Um if you're if you're Harry Kane and and Pep Guardiola's been in your ear, you probably want to go and play for him. Let's be honest, lads. You know, I'm sure you've been in that in that position, Pete. You know, with with clubs where you want to go on, you want to be a success. You might want a few medals uh, in in your pocket. And um, listen, different players have different mentalities nowadays. That's some lads want money, some lads want to go on and and win medals. Right? It isn't. It is the way that things have gone nowadays, unfortunately. Um, for me, you know, you, you sit back and you look at all your medals, 
But then again, we've heard of lads gone by in years have had to sell all their medals because they haven't had money. So you know, it's a, it's a double edged sword, really, isn't it? Um, but he's only on two hundred grand a week at Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah, he's yeah, he's only on. But but listen to Pete. The sports are going nowhere. The sports are absolutely going nowhere, right? Um, in my opinion, going right? nowhere. Uh, if you lose their best players, mate. I agree. Going going nowhere, right? Uh, in Grish's case, uh, listen, I I think he stays. To be honest with you, um. But if he does go and, and under a, under an even better coach, he becomes a better player. Um, to be honest, uh, but in Kane's case, I think he's just outgrown spores. The the way he's gone about it, listen, we we've been there with, with Suarez, we've been there before, lads. So listen, it, it's we've been there with Coutinho, um, yeah. with our back. It's not nice as a fan to see a player of your club trying to do that, but you know he, he wants mm -hmm. to. He he's. Man City are in his ear, lads. He obviously wants to go and do something yeah. he feels is going to be a better project for him. Yeah, look, we, we've had our heart broken loads of times with players we thought might have stayed on for the rest of their careers, you know. Um, but uh, Sam Tandy there says, ultimately money is the main factor for most players. Grealish yeah. and Kane, if they end up a City, um, will be not on less wages than they are now. That's for sure. Of course, they're going to go yeah. to City and they... they they get paid regardless. If they're sitting on the bench, they get the pay, get paid the same. It's just a, just a, just a, just a vicious circle, lads. It's yeah. like it's, yeah. it's just yeah. just goes just goes round and around. Like yeah. I don't I, I don't feel sorry for Harry Kane because he signed a six year contract and and whatever. But I don't feel sorry for Spurs that he's trying to engineer because Spurs will have treated players over the years as dog shit as of Liverpool mm -hmm. as of every club. Mm -hmm. So like like it's a like. For instance, I think Lewis Suarez down to Old Akron again to try and get a move to Ajax. He got his move. Yeah. We done a deal with Ajax. He did down to Old and told Ajax on down to Old to get this move to Liverpool. Then he did something similar or in a roundabout way to get a move out of Anfield. He had Coutinho with the back thing, like he's mentioned. But, like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Then other clubs, then, then other clubs, other clubs will three. Players fucking terribly. I think Hillman tried to get Nias out, whatever. And I think it's Nias. He wouldn't give him. Told him his locker was gone, and he wasn't. He wasn't allowed train in the first team dressing room. It's a first team player on the contract. Disgraceful. Yeah. Disgraceful. Yeah. Like, to treat a player like that. So looking like it's it's like it's listen. There's like there's it's a race to the bottom. There's no point in there's no point in crying and putting all your eggs in the Harry Kane basket. And there's no point in crying putting them all in the Spurs basket. The club Davo, basket Davo. Because, yeah. Davo, there's also another blame in this, and listen, it's a no, it's a subject for another night. But agents are yeah, are, yeah, are, are another blame for this, unfortunately. Yeah. Look, yeah, time. agents are dominating the game these days. Mm. But just just la last uh, question on this, Davo. Looking at our own situation at Liverpool, somebody mentioned Trent uh, Reeks mm. of a um, a one club player. Um, what has to happen at Liverpool for Trent to stay there? For oh, we'll have to. Career. We'll have to be competitive and and listen. You can have loads of. Listen, you can always have a bad year where you fall out of the Champions League. Lucky enough, that didn't happen to us last year when it looked like we were staring at it in the face. And I always kind of think you'll keep players for one year. You'll get away with one year in the Europa League with, with top players. You won't get away with two. So we'll have to be competitive. We'll have to be um, playing Champions League football. And ultimately, that that will be it. If, if we're competitive and we're we're, we're challenging. Um, he'll do his best to stay at Liverpool, I, I believe, Trent Rarity. But if things kind of fall off the face of a cliff or whatever you want, it will be hard for him. But he would, I, I think, Trent is, is that ambitious. He would realise that if things are bad and say it mm. goes back to a Roy Hodgson kind of level of stuff like that, he, he'll go. He'll go to, to mm. for the betterment of his career, and 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 Roy, and so and so he should. But listen, you have to. It's a whole myriad of things. You've, you've obviously got to have the ability to pay him well. But you listen, if you you got you have to be competitive. A plan. It's all about Europe now. It's all about Champions League football. Yeah. That's really what it's all about. I, I was asking Gard earlier on what what's the you know the formula for keeping a player loyal at a club and like Sam hits the nail on the head there. You have to have the right manager. I mean, mm. as long as Klopp is there, every player is going to want to stay there. Like I'm sure when Alden would have liked to stay at Liverpool under the right circumstances, but it wasn't to be. But you very rarely hear players that used to play for Klopp saying that negative. They mm -hmm. all want to play for him, and it's it's a tough slog for a few years. That the work rate mm -hmm. and everything that's expected and the way they train. And you look at the friendlies now; it's really interesting how they're they're managing the minutes. 
and how how many games they're playing and days after the next and two games in the same day it's it's mad 